Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. This is my O2 Suburban and this right here is called a message center. If you get a uh, certain messages from the uh, onboard diagnostics or the computers that are in the car, it's not a very sophisticated message center. The ones on newer cars are much more uh, elaborate but I have been getting a message here that said low coolant it's intermittent so it's not doing it right now I thought it might but uh, um, I'm not getting the message right now uh, low coolant is a, a very uh, important and serious message however when I let's see what's oh that's just security let's start it once more and see if something comes up Just for the fun of it, I'm seeing if I get the I get the message. Oops. I just restarted it to see if I would get the message, and uh, I'm not. So I'm going to shut it down and uh, open the hood, and I. Uh, I show you. Um, the coolant is not low, uh, so what I, I know that I have then is a uh, sensor that's gone bad. Okay, this is my overflow. This is a pressurized overflow coolant bottle, and there's a sensor down below with some wires to it. Now. Here's the replacement. I've already got the re replacement. And I'm going to show you. Oh, right there. There's where the uh, sensor attaches. So the orientation would be like that. So it comes straight off the bottom there. I think you can just about see it down there. Yeah. So, and also you can see the coolant level. There's nothing wrong with the coolant level. So I've got a bad sensor, but I've got to replace the whole tank because the sensor does not come off separately. It's it's sealed on there um, because this is a pressurized tank. So I guess that's why they had to do it. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to put this new tank on. Okay. Before we start, um, make sure the engine is cool. I just started this up for like a minute to pull it into my uh, area where I'm going to work. Uh, make sure that this overflow tank is not pressurized and mine is not pressurized because like I said I just ran it for a second or two. There's really only uh, two nuts. Uh, there's going to be one there one there, two hoses, the uh, suction and the return, and this is an overflow so it just goes to the inside the truck, it doesn't go anyplace else. Uh, so it's going to be pretty easy. The only thing will be a little bit messy, when I take the bottom hose off uh, I'm going to spill some antifreeze. I'm not even going to worry about catching it because it's like a maybe a half a gallon and um, and uh, I'll, I'll just rinse it rinse it away and, and refill the tank. Uh, so let's start with the, the hoses. These are special pliers for this type of a hose clamp and uh, they've got little end pieces. Yeah, There's a good close-up for you. Little end pieces that uh, are especially designed to hold these clamps. And then when you squeeze it, it locks. So it makes it easy to... I can't, can't lock it one more time, but right there it locks and that's enough to make it turn. And when you're breaking these loose, try to twist the hose first like this, then pull it out. That'll make it easier. You've got to break it loose while the, the hose clamp is not putting tension on it. 
Okay, so that one's off. We just put that out of the way. And we'll go for the bottom one. It's going to be the messy one. Okay, <clears throat> we've got our second hose off. Right there. I did the same thing with the pliers. Special uh, hose clamp pliers. Make sure you keep this hose up high so it won't drain out any more coolant than is necessary. And like I said, this one just spilled the coolant down on the ground. So now it's empty. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take two bolts and take that out. Two nuts, excuse me. That's the um, one of the nuts I'm trying to get out. It's, it's 10 millimeter. It's turning a little bit stiff, so I'm going to hit it with some PB Blaster, um, which is a, a nice penetrating uh, lubricant that I use. This may come off easy. Actually, it turns out it's one, one nut and one bolt that holds the uh, tank down. Uh, let me show you one other thing. These little ears here are going to slip over this oh where's my flashlight hold on a second those little ears that I showed you are gonna slip down into that there that slot right there doesn't even look like anything but it's a little slot right there to further hold it in place now here's our sensor connection right there uh, so you can take that off before you do the the bolt and the nut, or you can take it off now. I just left it for afterwards, and uh, either way works. And there it is. Old one out, and new one going in. I might not show you every little bit of the new one going in, because it's just the reverse, but if there's anything special, I will show it to you, okay? Okay, here's one little tip. When you put this down, on that little slot that I told you. Don't, you don't have to force it. At, for, at first I thought I was going to like hammer it in there a little bit, but if you line up the, the nut and the bolt holes and just kind of ease it in there, it'll, it'll drop right in there. And now I'm ready for the nut and bolt. Um, so just don't, don't be a gorilla. Don't force it. It'll go in there. This is all these, by the way, are original GM parts, AC Delco parts. Um, for this job, it was a little extra money, but I, I, I just like the way the parts go back on easier. and They're usually of uh, quite a bit higher quality um, than uh, aftermarket. I've got a, a gear wrench that I'm using on the bolt. Yeah, that's good, 10 millimeter. That's just about the perfect tool to get down in there. I don't have to have an open end where I'm taking it off and on and off and on and off and on. Just use this gear wrench, and a socket won't fit. So, get yourself a set of gear wrenches. Um, whenever you have a chance, if you think you're going to use them. And uh, this one, I can get on with a socket and an extension. I'm going to put some of this dielectric lubricant on the uh, on the connection where is it right here just on the rubbery well it's not really rubber it's some other probably some silicone thing but just to make it go together good and keep it weatherproof these are actually pretty good connections these days um, but a little extra won't hurt I'm also going to put some silicone glide on these two hose connections just so the hoses go back on there now you might wonder why about replacing the hoses uh, you could do that but the reason I'm not doing that is they're so easy I mean this one is goes from here to here if it's not leaking I'm just gonna reuse it and uh, then if it does leak down the road I can replace it and the other one well, the other one is uh, going down to the lower part of the radiator. 
but also the same philosophy, I guess, is, is what I'm going to say. Is, is it's it's a truck, so everything's right out there in the open, easy to get at. Um, I'll reuse that hose, and then if it ever leaks, then I'll I'll replace it when it leaks. Otherwise, I might get another 50,000 miles out of it. This truck's got about 105,000 on it. Um, and really, this is <laughs> this is like the biggest thing I've had to do. I do have to do a water pump on this, which uh, my UPS guy just uh, drove up a few minutes ago. I don't know if you heard him drive up and uh, dropped it off. I'm going to do a whole separate video on that because um, it's really a separate deal. Um, but yeah. I'm going to reuse the hoses. Uh, I'm going to put a little sill glide on them so they go on good, and uh, I think it'll it'll help them seal maybe a little bit because uh, the you know the hoses do get dried out over time. So let's do that. Okay, is the bottom one on? Oh, I'm just holding this camera kind of backwards. I, I use the uh, the pliers again, the special pliers. To get that on, and I give it a little twist, a little, yeah, give it a little love there so it doesn't leak. There, I think that's going to be okay. I'll, I will, of course, check that every once in a while. You can see a little bit of the coolant went back into the tank from this. Now I'll do the top one. Okay, we get the top one on. Where are you? There you are. Top one on, silicone, give it a little twist, give it a little love, uh, should be alright. I'm going to tell you the same thing about the radiator cap. I'm going to use this one over again, yes, I know it's uh, 12 years old, but it's working and uh, it's easy to change. If I need to change the radiator cap for some reason, um, uh, let me talk a little bit about what you should notice in this tank. Um, it has a fill level that I'm going to try and show you. I probably should have showed you on the old tank. Well, actually, you can read it pretty good on this new tank because it's all nice and... Let's see if I get an angle where you can read it. There. I think you can see that. It says full cold, and it's got a little arrow over here where my fingers and it's right to this seam here the seam is where you should your cold level of coolant should be now hot it should come up a little bit so that's what you want to look at if you and look at your engine sometimes when it's nice and hot and see if the coolant level has come up to about there where my middle finger is and then look at it the next day after it's sat overnight and it's got cold and see if it comes down here if that happens, then it's working. It's expand the coolant is expanding into this tank when the engine's hot, and it's sucking it back into the radiator and the uh, water jacket around the engine when it cools off. Just about maybe an inch, maybe not even an inch change in the level of the tank is what you should see. And also, you should be watching your temperature gauge on your dash when you drive your car. And you probably, if you have a later model car, have an idiot light that will come on bright red if the gauge pegs into the hot zone. Uh, but by then, you might have already done damage. They're not that terrific. Um, so I re recommend check your gauges all the time. Uh, so that's how this should look and how it should work. Now I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to fill it over full. Why? Because I've lost some coolant in that hose and well really that hose is the only place I've lost any coolant. So I'm going to overfill it so that it's up about about one inch high cold and then I think after it cycles a few times it'll drop down to that seam. Okay? That's about all Froggy's got for you on the overflow cool, coolant overflow tank on an O2 Suburban and many, many other GM cars and trucks. So if you have any questions, post them up. I do these for you guys and gals. Uh, I enjoy doing it, and I enjoy your comments too. Uh, so put them up there if you have any questions or any thing you think you would do differently, go ahead and put it up there.
Uh, I love to learn from you guys and gals. Uh, I will see you later. Uh, click a like or a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe if you want more from Froggy. Take care. Bye-bye. Froggy out. One more thing. If you've watched many of Froggy's videos, you come to expect one more thing. <laughs> so I always think of something else that I want to tell you. Um, this is the orange coolant. It's called Dex Cool. This is a approved, it's a Prestone brand, but it's approved by GM. This is what I use. I like to buy the 100% coolant, and I mix it myself, 50-50 with distilled water. Um, you can buy the 50-50 already done, you're just paying a little bit more uh, for this, the same stuff. Um, this truck, that's all it's ever had in it. I haven't had any problems. Uh, the radiator's still good. Uh, it's cooling good. Um, this little sensor thing, I, I can't imagine, has anything to do with the Dex Cool. Uh, so, um, yeah, just wanted to show you that. Don't forget to put that in. Remember, I'm going to put in a little bit extra for what I lost in that hose. Okay, bye-bye.